All right, my name is Zeppelin. I am here with Amped, and we have a very special guest with us today uh, in our C-Suite series, Mr. Tumabasa. How are you doing, sir? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. All right, so just kind of to get straight to it, for folks who, you know, may not necessarily be industry, entertainment industry, may not necessarily know who you are, can you give us a brief intro? Who is Mr. Tumabasa? So... Uh, wait, who is so? My real name is Tumaini Basaninyenzi. So, so if you get the real me, okay. Tumabasa is basically an, is an abbreviated uh, form of Tumaini Basaninyenzi. The first four letters of both my names, and that's what I use as my professional name. So, when you ask who is Tumabasa, that's me on. I'm a music curator by trade. I started at BET in DC, moved to New York in the year 2000, and went on to MTV for 10 years, 2002 to 2012, and then helped with the founding team of Revolt, 2012 2015. And then I went on to be the head of hip hop at Spotify, started like the Rap Caviar playlist, et cetera, et cetera. And now I'm at YouTube where I'm the director of Black Music and Culture. I love that. A very long career, very storied career. Here's where I want to start off so that, uh, you know, I want to kind of get the audience facing in one direction and also just get your take on this because I've heard you work across so many different mediums. In your opinion, over the last 20 years, what do you feel like has been the most important invention for the music industry that's pushed it forward? Mm, I would say streaming. Okay. Why do you say that? Uh, because it removed a lot of the physical barriers to to opportunities or to exposure. At the same time, you're monetizing, so you're making money off of streaming. Even from a music curation perspective, it became a democratized playlisting, dem- democratized music programming, because now you could do it yourself. Social media may be the other. 20 years ago, Black Planet was our concept of social media, right? And then the MySpaces and all the, there was, there was all these forums, if you want to count that as social media, there was like chat groups and all that stuff. Of course, Facebook and uh, Instagram and Twitter and Vine, you know what I mean? And uh, so so that, that's the other, I think those two between streaming and social media, I think those are the most important, at least in, from our perspective, you know what I mean? Uh, a, a black music and culture perspective, you know? So let's, let's kind of pick up 2015, you moved to uh, to Spotify, and so you come in as the the global head of, of hip hop. When you first got in there, what did you understand your role and your duty to kind of be? Um, my my role there was the same as the my role anywhere uh, in any com- company I've been. I'm, when I'm out in the culture, I'm a representative of the company, right? But when I'm in the company, I'm a representative of the culture. So even here, when, here at YouTube. Like I'm, I, I'm representing us inside. I'm trying to make this bigger and better, and that information is getting out to everybody. Like you know, what I mean, that the, the people aren't leaving opportunities on the table. My view uh, at that time is exact same as my view now. What can help advance or push the culture or our community in a positive forward direction? You know, and that's that doesn't change. Like the like, we already know all this, and it actually does change. I'm, oh my gosh, it does change. It gets bigger and better. You see what I'm saying? Because okay. now more uh, genres can be included, more geographical movements, like movements out of different places, can be included. You know what I mean? The micro genre, like, it, like it, it, it just gets bigger and better linguistically. You know what I mean? This like this. Yeah, so you're an ambassador. Yeah. You're an ambassador for our culture to really kind of yeah, exactly. You know, yeah, exactly. exactly. Things that the corporate structure or entities may not be able to identify. You just kind of naturally get that, and you can communicate it. We had the greatest discussion about uh, diversity uh, two days ago. Okay. When you have diverse um, a representation within a company, you have to pick people who are in these streets. You know what I mean? Who have accountability. You see what I'm saying? That they're not going to do any wrong because they have to go face, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, their, their, their people, they have to face their, even their own family, et cetera, et cetera. And so the discussion we were having is that diversity at these companies cannot be window dressing. It has to be like people who really are engaged and who really care, et cetera, about where they come from or who they are, et cetera. And so that optimal output 
exists. I love that. Um, is there a difference between locally pushing or breaking versus thinking about it from a, a global scale? Is there a difference between uh, a local or domestic? Uh, yeah, the way you're mentally when you're thinking about it, because you said, you know, you're a programmer. So is the way that do you think about it differently uh, when you're programming for? So this, know, this is the way I think about it. This okay. Is, and, this, and this hasn't changed in over 20 years. It's, right. There's like a scale, right? Is zero to 20, right? Is that, 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 that's what, what you're considering the, that the core support. Mm-hmm. The record then goes 20 to 40, and then 40 to 60, 80 to 100, right? And kind of figure out where is this? Because that way you don't miss records that are on their way up, right? Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Because it's just, it's just, or even artists or movements, right? right? that you're not being kind of um, stuck with a status quo, that you're uh, recognizing the growth potential. So it's more about the the pace, you know what I mean? It's more about the diffusion. Like when I say diffusion, I'm talking about how it's traveling from one audience to another. Mm-hmm. Right? And, and sometimes the audience are like high information, high consumption, sometimes they're low, you know what I mean? So you're like, okay, and that's when something crosses over. Now. Little little Susie in 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 uh I don't want to say I don't want to say in Frederick Maryland you know what I mean is is jamming to what they were jamming to in Southeast DC you know what I mean like like two months ago because little Susie or forget about little Susie let's say her mom you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? her mom who has all kinds of stuff uh in front is you know what I mean? like has to take the kids to soccer practice now something is grown enough that it's on her radar how is it on her radar you know that so that's what i mean by diffusion or by travel that's really interesting and and you know when we when we spoke with henny he kind of talked about a similar point of like like uh the way that he kind of looks at, at labels potentially is like you know smaller labels might help get an artist from zero to 60 but then you take them to a major to kind of go from 60 to 100 so i think it's yeah. interesting you kind of think about compartmentalizing in a similar way where it's like w- what you do for somebody at 80 to 100 might be different than somebody who's at zero to 20. Yeah. And, and also, also you have to remember something else is uh, it also reminds you that anything is possible. Mm. Don't count anyone out. Absolutely. And then look for the, the, the commonalities of the people who actually kind of uh, take things to that level. And, and, and it's, it's almost, I don't want to say it's impossible to predict because there are people who are good at it. You know what okay. I mean? They're speculating or forecasting what's going to pop, you know what I mean? But it keeps you on your toes. And I, you know what I, mean? and I, I love that part of the game. I love it. So let's now say, um, because one of the things that we like to do at Amped is to make it really palatable. I mean, we're very uh, blessed and, and know that we're in a fortunate position to be able to have access to someone like you that a lot of folks that, you know, uh, are, are on the grounds may not necessarily get to until, you know, they reach a certain point in their career if they do reach that point. And so let's say I'm, at, I'm an artist and I'm between that zero to 40 range. You know, I might be just getting started or I might have put a record out and it's kind of getting a little buzz and traction. What tools or what resources does YouTube have um, that you find creators that are kind of in that beginning stage are not tapping into that they should be tapping into? You know, that yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Because there's so, uh, like the live, like going live and, and redirecting people to your premieres, like... Something I love the premiere on YouTube because it reminds me of the old 106 and Park TRL setup. It's like you're 106 and parking your own video. Yeah. You're creating an event for your own video. You're making an appointment for your video. You're creating energy and anticipation for your video, right? And 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 we used to depend on the a countdown show, et cetera, et cetera, before, right? And say, oh, after school, I gotta make sure they're, they're, they're new jointing the new uh, Destiny's Child video or the new jointing the new the Franchise Boys video or whatever, right? Right? Or or the spanking new video on TRL, right? Is now YouTube, which is very self serve, you can do that yourself. And then there's a lot of people who don't utilize it. They upload like, what are you, what are you doing, man? That's not enough. You can't. It's just not. It's not the, just the link in the bio uh, type game. Like, like, like make your shit an event, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Make it, you put a lot of time into this uh, music visual content. Maybe even build up some stuff before. Make a visualizer before. Make a, a lyric video before. Do You know what I mean? Do something that makes this feel big. 
It makes it feel worthy of my time. You see what I'm saying? Doing a live stream, gathering your fans all together, actually being there and, and, and responding to comments and chats, et cetera, et cetera. You are amplifying your own shit. Creating a live moment for them. Exactly. Uh, no, not, not even that. This is real life. Creating an unforgettable, memorable moment. Something like I was there, you wasn't there type of, of, of you know what I mean? Absolutely. Like for your fans. So, and, and that's for your core fans. That's, that's not for everybody. You know what I mean? That give, throw them a bone. Put, yeah. put merch, uh, your merch bar underneath. You know what I mean? Like, like let, let them like, oh, okay, oh, this is double, et cetera. Make it easy for them. Uh, I don't know if, uh, we're, we're in your college if you had a student union, but yeah. I went to Iowa. And okay. I, Iowa, all the black kids, like, we met at the student union. Georgetown, we had a black student union, black student alliance, yeah. But like a, a meeting place, like the physical meeting place, you know? So what happens is this, is is if, if, if I wanted to see a black people, that's where I went, right? Because there wasn't a lot of black people where I went to school at the time. Uh, but the, so the thing is this, is you do the same thing. It's like this is huge world, there's too much music out there, right? Yeah. It's too much centralize pack pack back then create intimate experiences and then you can do that on youtube what i like about what you're saying and this is kind of a, a core belief that I've, I've had for a couple of years now is that i believe that the most successful artists almost see themselves as a media company in and, yeah. in and of themselves, right? They have the music, and if we look at some of the best, such as you know your Beyonces, and you know she's putting out either a, a, a movie or a documentary or something to accompany every album. And I think that you know really smart artists do that. And it seems like YouTube is probably the best platform to allow artists to see themselves as a media company. Hundred percent. You know, you know, you know. What I really love. I'm glad you said it about the network. Uh, I listen to the Joe Budden podcast, right? Okay. I love the Joe Budden, the Joe, the Joe Budden podcast. And there was a time he talks about his own as a network. You know what I mean? I, I like I, he treats it like a network. You see what I'm saying? So I, I watch on YouTube, and he feeds that beast. And 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 that I'm like, okay, this is like I, I love that. You know what I mean? I love that because it's like okay, that's it's a it's a next level type of you know uh, a vibe. Like yeah, you know, absolutely. So what do you feel like, you know, because I know the question, I'm sure you you might get it or at least your counterparts might come to yeah. you and say, this is probably the, at the most rudimentary level. They say, how do I get my YouTube subscribers up? How no, do I get I'm the wrong person to ask. I, how do I get well, well, here, I'll, I'll, I'll give you uh, the, the okay. engagement. Is very consistency. You, you see what I'm saying? That your subscribers know that you're going to be subscribing, etc. And you, they show up, like yeah. So, so it's engagement. You know, and, and consistency. You, you start and you don't stop. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. You know. Okay. It's almost like uh, like you're te like a television station. Like you wouldn't come back to a TV station. And then you think it's not going to do nothing. Yeah. yeah. Come on. Yeah. What is that? <laughs> uh, uh, you know. Fair enough. I like that a lot. One of the questions that I, I had for you, uh, kind of like bringing it macro a little bit, you know, you've had the opportunity to work with and for some of the greatest hip hop minds, right, in, in, in your career, um, having, as you said, working with, uh, working with Diddy at Revolt, now working with, uh, with Lior over at YouTube. Yeah. I want to know, what are some of the things that, you know, in your experience working with them that you've really taken away that you feel like has helped you not only do your job better, um, but also just kind of, you know, helped push you in your in your own career. So the two, two things like with Puff and with Lior is they see things that other people don't see, right? In terms of potential, in terms of like, especially Lior, like what well, I mean, Puff is the same, but um, more recently is he'll hear everything out, right? And then point out the things that are not mentioned and then you're like, Oh snap. But you know, you see what I'm saying? So, so it's, that's that kind of visionary entrepreneurial. So that's part of the, the game I, I try to soak up. It's like, what's missing here? What, what, what's the intangible? What's, you know what I mean? Where, where, where which direction can this go? Which direction? And, and it's all like hypothetical in the mind or, um, uh, foresight, you know what I mean? So, so those, those are the two things that the both of them, I, I noticed, at least from my observation, that they 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 are they have a lot, yeah, like a, yeah, 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 a lot, 
nothing that comes from uh, uh, lived experiences. So Tuma, let's talk numbers really quickly because when we talk about all these platforms, no matter where you're at, you know, I feel like numbers are the thing that at least catches people's eye first. So whether it's streaming, whether it's you know YouTube, people are always looking at that. As a as a programmer, as a curator, as a decision maker, when you're looking at an artist, when a label or a manager brings the artist and they come across your desk, how important are numbers to you? They're important. They're not. They're not defining. They don't define it. You know what I mean? But they they are important because it gives you uh, kind of a glimpse of not just where something is. You know what I mean? They're important. But but then it's not numbers. You can't just look at numbers. It's the data. You see what I'm saying? It's, it's, yeah, you, have to, you have to look at a, the multi, multiple multiple uh, variables. It can't just be just like the the, the vanity metric. Like oh, uh, like because a lot of culture cannot be quantified. You know what I'm saying? And so this, not everything is measurable. The energy uh, part or enthusiasm is not always measurable. But even with the numbers, and I know this is something, and I'm really, I was kind of curious as when I knew I was talking to you, kind of curious to get your thoughts on this. Streaming factories, right? Streaming farms. I know that even major artists are using them. Right. So, yeah, what but, but, but the cool thing about a lot of these companies is that they have fraud detection. Uh, okay. Yeah, the very heavy, heavy fraud detection. So th that always backfires. Okay. Know? Yeah. So, so you would not recommend an uh, Never, never, never. That's a, that's, that's a, a ripoff. That's a, yeah. yeah. Never, never recommend something like that. Okay. But you have, you know, you've obviously, you've heard the conversation and you know. Oh, I've heard about existing, but I mean, I, I don't have any firsthand experience. But I just do know that there are very uh, skilled professional people who uh, who uh, identify that quickly, you know? Absolutely. Your role as director of, of Black music and culture, can you talk about what that means? Because it's so it's so broad, right? Like, what is that? what does that kind of mean, like, on a very micro, micro basis, especially the word culture? Like, what is it that you are? You well, are the culture part, I'm, I threw that in there. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I threw that in there. I was like, yo, you threw that in there. Yeah. Okay. To be honest with you, I've never been about titles. Okay. Like, like right? It's it's more about like the responsibility and um what you take accountability for. And in this case, it's growth. And and the growth is not just like like we said earlier, it's not just about people seeing, but it's also about people knowing and people growing. And when I say growing, I'm talking about monetization as well. You see what I'm saying? Is that is that people that uh, that we know about how to um, uh, not only monetize on YouTube, right? But we get the kind of a, a good share, you know? That kind of advocacy is necessary in the background or alliance. Well, alliance with the people who really know what they're talking about and really know what they're doing, or who have deep relationships in these arenas. And is one of the things that you were kind of responsible for is the, the YouTube, uh, I think, Black Voices Initiative? No, I'm not responsible for that, but I'm on the team that works. Okay, on got you. So can you talk a little bit I, about that? That's a company-wide thing. That's a big thing. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah, okay. Yeah, so... So so basically, like, for example, the artist grants, you know what I mean? It's a team that uh, 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 picking, like, you know, Brent Fiaz or uh, TK Maidza, uh, Serpent with Feet, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, it's just like just dope artists on the come up. And then we have, like, Afro-Brazilian artists uh mike towers who's like afro latino you know is, is representing diverse spectrum of black people and giving uh, that that extra like kind of uh like that look you know you see what i'm saying and what is what is that i mean you know as much as you can talk about it what does it look like quantifiably like we'll work on content that they, they're going to put on youtube gotcha. and it's, it's it's uh directly supported you know in terms gotcha. of like the the, yeah, some of the uh, costs and some, you know? Yeah. Yeah, so these are partnerships. These are partnerships. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I like that a lot. And, and how does one, what is somebody who's aspiring to be a part of that or to partner with YouTube? Like, what do they have to kind of achieve in their career? Do they need to be signed to a major label? Do they no, need to No, no, no. Some of these guys are not signed. Uh, yeah, some of these guys are not. A lot of this, a lot of indies. Okay. No, it, 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 I think I think it's just building your YouTube page and getting it on our radar. You know, yeah. It, it, when you build your YouTube, uh, it, we will see it. No, I mean, no, no, let me not talk. Like, let me not. That's 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 not that's not cool. Is is getting it on our radar? It's like building building enough audience, big big audience, 
yeah. And, uh, yeah. You know? That makes sense. I mean, obviously, if they're they're investing in the platform, the platform would then want to invest back. Exactly. You exactly. Know? I like that. That's uh, I'm gonna use that. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna use the <laughs> next interview. Uh, like, oh, yeah, if you invest in the platform, we're gonna invest in you. Yeah. yeah no, I, I like that a lot. As we begin to wrap up, I know that the DMV has always had a warm space in your heart, and now you're you're back home. There we go. You're back home. Um, and that's one of the things here, you know, with Amp, the reason why we kind of really started this platform is that we wanted to give the DMV something that was high quality that could help, you know, uh, show it in the, the magnificent light that we do. So what are some of the things that you feel like uh, from the D.C. area, the DMV area, ways that you feel like our artists can really tap in with with YouTube or, or better work with the, you know, the platform that you're not necessarily oh, seeing? The first part is unity. You know what I mean? Is is when you work as a movement, you have more power. You see what I'm saying? And then also you're bringing the audience to, you know, mm -hmm. combining audiences, you're combining, you're working together. If I'm uh, an artist that work with other artists, even if I post it on my, upload it to my page, I can use the community tab, which, which, uh, kind of cross pollinates audiences. Like, Hey, I'm, this isn't on my page, but I'm on this, et cetera. Right. So yeah, it's joining forces. Is uh, the, the it, I even like the way that you said DMV. This is DC, Maryland, Virginia. It's not like don't not not get insulted. Like no, nah, uh, we're, uh, we're Maryland, we're Virginia. No, 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 no. It's it's like trust me when the Bay Area or you know what I mean when 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 they're talking about New York, they're talking about people from Westchester and Long Island and New Jersey and you know they're not like they're like um, discriminating. You know you see what I'm saying? Brooklyn, Harlem, you know they're not discriminating. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and yeah, so, so unity, that's it. That's it. That's my answer. Unity. You know, that that's definitely something that I think that, you know, with these clubhouse conversations, we've all been kind of hearing. Yeah. Oh, I, 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 I was doing yeah. one with Bird and them. Yeah. Oh, you'll get that. Right. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so you hear yeah. all of that. Oh yeah. I was, I was, I was in one. I, I enjoy them. Yeah. Enjoy them. But, but, but bottom line, that's, that's what's necessary to be a force. Yeah. The unity piece. Awesome. Well, Tuma, man, thank you so much for thank you, thank you Zeppelin. No, no that was fun for for taking yeah for taking out the time to to talk with us. And you have such a fantastic career, and I think that our audience is gonna um is gonna gain a lot. So if you had any just like you know closing thoughts for specifically you know us home in the DMV talking to artists or managers, like what yeah. are some closing thoughts? I, I do have a thing. So it has to do with technology. Uh, COVID proved that you can work from anywhere. Content or entertainment is 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 is, is knowledge, right? Now with technology, the, the feeling the need to like go to an LA or Atlanta or New York to get put on, it, it's minimized a lot. Technology has done that because you can literally do it from here. Is building the infrastructure to achieve that on the levels of these destinations? Because if this is home. Why leave? Like, you know what I mean? Like, like, like build, like, you see what I'm saying? Let, take the, the long way. And I'm not saying that in a hypocrite because I, I did go to New York and I did go to LA, et cetera, and to build my network. And guess what? Is now the majority of communications happening digitally. You can build your network from here, you know? So it's people who really, uh, you know what I mean? Like, I think, like, like, like fuck with your work. That's it. That's what, that's all I want to say. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. Yeah. Appreciate you, bro. Thank you, Zeppelin.